Okay, well this demo is going to go over on how to do the composite for Big Little Person Big World. Um, so here's some samples of st what students have done in the past. Um, this is kind of, it still fits in the sense that instead of the person being little, the world is little. So you can use that interpretation for this assignment as well. Um, and then um, the big thing in making this fee feel seamless is this idea of adding shadows. So this person, even though I'm not a big fan of the type of shadow, she did recreate the shadow twice. So I thought that was pretty good and recreated her reflection. So I thought that was nice. Um, this is what, what Randy did in this project was he created the set, photographed it, and then inserted himself. And he used paper to build all of that. So um, if you're curious how he lit this, he actually used a flashlight and did like slow burn. Um, to make it look more like moonlight. Uh, this one is another example of maybe a small world and a big person. So you can go with that interpretation. Um, but what I'm going to demo today is something like this for you guys where I'm taking Abby and her making her as small as her toys um, and kind of creating that she's playing with them and, and how I think she plays with them in her mind. So the first thing you're going to do um, when it comes to photographing them, let's talk a little bit about photo tips. Um, so here, um, photograph your subject and your background, whatever world you're creating in the same lighting, and if not in the same area. Um, this will help match the lighting in your scene. So this is Abby. Um, whoops. Uh, we had a tea party, um, and I photographed her in the same place that I had photographed the dollhouse. You can see that they both have the same background and the same lighting and I did them pretty much within at least 30 minutes of each other. Um, I use a tripod except for some of these I had a handhold because I couldn't get low enough with my tripod to get the same kind of perspective like shooting you know I, I thought about shooting her straight on and shooting the thing straight on to help build where she's going to go. Uh, use the same depth of field or f-stop so that you have the same depth you know focus that happens in the image and also try to keep the same digital noise just so that um, you, or the same ISO to match your digital noise. All right, so once you shot your pictures, um, go. you're gonna go ahead and import into Lightroom. Don't forget to apply your metadata um, and uh, rename your files. Uh, I do want you to create a contact sheet through the print module. You can make one contact sheet of all the pictures you've done for both final projects or both parts of the final project, or you can give me two contact sheets. I'm not too particular as long as I get a contact sheet. Um, the first thing I wanna do is you're gonna go in and um, and I think for this one, I'm just going to use a different picture. You want to go to the develop module um, and you want to do all your global adjustments. So I can do my white balance. Um, maybe I want to warm this one up just a titch. Um, uh, your total adjustments, I add a little bit of clarity. Also, your sharpening, 75, masking, we'll knock that down a little bit and your lens profile. So make sure to apply all your global adjustments and then to sync them to all your pictures. And the nice thing is if you did photograph these all in the same lighting, you, the global adjustments will work. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give that one a four and then um, let me go down to rated. I already went through and rated some of these um, for the sake of speed. And I think for this one, I'm going to, let's see, here, which one do I wanna? I think I'm gonna try this picture. Um, try putting that one in to the scene and see what that looks like. So let me give that one a four. And then, yep, so now I have my two selects. I'm going to control click and I'm going to go edit and edit as smart object, which is your first blank. And I realize I need to open up a Word document. So while those are opening, um, create a document. Okay, so smart is your first blank. Uh, while those images are opening in Photoshop, I'm gonna give you guys um, onto the photo editing steps. Um, so with this uh, smart subject image selected first, I'm gonna move that or copy that image into the background image. So I'm gonna call with the move tool, which is V for, for Victor. Um, I'm gonna move that into the background image. For step nine, I'm going to rename my layers just so I know which one is which. So my subject layer, I'm going to rename subject, and then my background layer, I'm going to rename background. Um, and that just, I'm kind of big about organizing your stuff in Photoshop. It just makes your life easier if you know what you're working on. Um, so let's see. Still opening up. All right, so I'm going to select the Move tool. I'm going to go ahead and click and drag. Open up that file, and then go ahead and click and drag this picture in. So, and obviously, Abby's much bigger than the dollhouse. Um, 
you don't have to necessarily. I could also just call one Abby and one the dollhouse. Um, but for the sake of notes, I just thought it makes sense if it's a little bit more generic. All right, so now I'm, once, I'm gonna make sure I have the subject layer selected. I'm gonna go up to select, select and mask. And now what I wanna do is um, click on select my subject. Oh, uh, in your notes, you wanna make sure the view is on overlay, which it already is, and overlay, if you wanna know the keyboard shortcut to that, so let me give you these blanks for these, uh, is V. Um, start the masking process by clicking on the select subject. I like to start here because it just saves you time. Um, you can use the Refine Edge tool, which is the R, to clean up the hair. And we want to make sure we're going to output this out as a layer mask um, because we uh, we don't need to make a new layer. Um, I still want to be able to access my smart layer in case my color is a little bit off and then I can adjust my brightness and all that stuff. So we just want to make sure to um, do it as a layer mask. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and come down here. Um, it did a pretty good job. It definitely did some stuff I didn't want. So if I hold down the option key, I don't want that leg in there, but I do do want her foot. Um, and it doesn't have to be too too precise because we are going to spend some time cleaning it up in um, Photoshop because you kind of have to make things match. But the less I have to do, the better. Oh, this is probably the downside if we're wearing similar toned pants. But, you know. It happens. So, I am using a Wacom tablet just because I'm working off a laptop and I do not like to use the tracking bar on the laptop. In case you're wondering, you can hear the scratching noises. So, um, in retrospect, um, when I kind of did that first one, I kind of wish maybe I just left a blank spot and I could have just used this chair so it looked like she was sitting a little bit more in the chair. But, um, you know, you kind of learn, you kind of figure things out as you're working and when you're compositing, but it's not the end of the world. So let me just, oh, we lost her face. Got her face back. All right, so I am gonna select the Refine Edge brush and I'm just gonna go around the edge of her hair. She does have curly hair like her mama. So, yep, that's a that's a pretty good base. Um, again, you're gonna spend some time cleaning it up so you don't, it doesn't have to be too perfect right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay for layer mask. And we can see that obviously she's much bigger than the dollhouse, but that's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do Command T on my subject layer, and I'm just going to go in and start sizing her down to fit into the chair that she's going to fit into. And this could be, you know, there's a couple ways you can interpret it. I actually kind of want to make her similar to the same size as her actual dolls. Um, yeah, we'll move her back just a little bit. So we definitely have, like, there's the table, so I can match her up to the table. Actually, that's not too bad. I think that looks pretty good. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit Enter to apply that transform. Um, when it comes to when you start doing the cleanup on the masking, I you, you want to zoom in at least 100%, which is Command-1. So your blank is Command-1. Um, so Command-1, whoops. I will be honest, when I start doing this detail kind of um, editing, I will sometimes also go in 200% just to like really see how my edges look. Um, command 1, like 100% is supposed to mimic um, what um, it looks like to, uh, to if you ever printed it. So sometimes just going in one more step just helps you with that. All right, so now what I'm going to basically do is select the brush tool and click on my subject layers, mask, and now I'm just going to use a combination of black and white to clean up my mask because I kind of have a little bit of some areas that need a little bit of attention. And also you can notice um, if I scroll down, like this is not matching up. Like some of this has to be hidden because in theory she would be behind this. So let me make sure this is all at 100%. So, you know, part of making it seem believable is technically she'd be behind some things. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, in your notes, a couple of things uh, you want to make sure is um, which keys allow you, which key allows you to switch between black and white color. One thing you're working on is the X key. So if you press the X key, you can toggle between the two. And just to remind you a little bit about masking, so black will hide, black hides, um, and white shows. So when you're masking, and think about like shadow and light, like when something is in the shadow, it will be hidden. And then when something is in the 
um, and uh, in the light we can see it. So I'm just going to come in here and kind of clean up what I know needs to be cleaned up. Um, especially where we still see some of the table. Now we do have in that chair, the extra part of her chair. Now the nice thing about masking is that if I go too far, I can just switch the keys and change it again. Now we do have, you're probably wondering like, oh no, there's a gap there, how are we gonna fix it? No worries, I'm gonna show you how to fix all of that. Yep, there's a gap right there too. So that will be not, it won't be too terribly a fix. One downside of that table is it does cast a little bit of a blue on her hand, and I'm also going to show you guys kind of how to show that. One thing you want to make sure you're doing when you're using the brush is I want to make sure my hardness is actually set to zero. So hardness down here needs to be zero, which is your blank for number 16. You want that to be zero percent. And the reason why you want that to be zero percent is um, you kind the best way to make it seem seamless if there's a gradation and at zero it has a little bit of feather effect so like look what I'm going into her arm you see how it's not so um, strong lined um, on this part of her chin and that can make it you know sometimes when I'm just trying to get rid of a little bit I'll just rub the edge of the feather into what I'm working on and it will just it will add a nice transition I'm not actually I'm like here like her nose you can see kind of a long dark line that allows me to go in and just kind of get rid of a little bit and make it look a little bit more feathered and transition nicely. Um, I'm going to come in here and add a little bit more of her hair back. That's probably a little too far. I'll try that again. Sometimes you just gotta. And you can also, if you wanted to, change your brush's opacity down, um, play around with the opacity. That sometimes also helps when you get to some of these tough areas. So if I lower my brush opacity, which is kind of what the Refine Edge brush does, or what I, I can also do is I can always um, go back into Select and Mask and come back in here with the Refine Edge brush and just go over that hair a little bit more to make it seem a little bit more natural than maybe. So there's, a, there's, there's multiple ways in which you can go in and kind of clean up these areas that you want to clean up. So, whoops. Let me go down a little bit, see if. Go back a little bit. Some of these edges, clean them up. All right, so um, obviously, we have some interesting things going on here with her feet because they're not quite lining up with the breaks like her feet here. Like there's a natural um, space happening with her legs, but it's not lining up with the table that exists. So this is where we're going to get a little bit creative. Um, and you might not have to do this. You might not have this problem. Everything might work out well for you and you might not have to worry about this. So what I'm going to do if things aren't quite lining up, I'm going to select the marquee tool. Um, I'm going to use the rectangle marquee tool and that marquee tools letter is M and I'm gonna come in here and make a selection of this area this basically this part of her legs like I want it I want this but I want to move it down right so it kinda of matches up a little bit I'm gonna go ahead and do command J to duplicate this um, this part so if I hit deselect so if I turn this on turn that off and now Did not do what I wanted to. Do. Okay, let's cut. Let's leave that real quick. Let's try that again. Marquee tool. Let me make selection of this. Command J. There we go. All right, that's what I wanted to happen. I'm gonna go ahead and call this legs. Um, I'm gonna turn this off for a second and come in here with a big black brush and just hide away um, this part real quick so that I, you know, so I don't have to look at it and I can try to make it match. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, so I'm turning this part of the legs back on, and I'm gonna go ahead and add a layer mask. Whoops, go back to legs, layer mask. And J was your last blank, I just realized I don't think I put that down. Nope, so Command J. All right, so now what I'm gonna go ahead and just, I'm going to, and I could do another um, selected mask, which I just opened up. 
I'm going to close that for a second. Or I can just come in here and brush really, really quickly the air out. Because um, it's pretty small. And I am using a Wacom tablet, so I can just brush kind of fast. And bring out the part of the legs I want to keep. Let's zoom out just a little bit so we have a little bit more to work with. You can also move things to kind of match up with what you have. So what if I put it right there? That might help me figure out what I want to keep. And I actually, I'm going to just take out that whole other foot and see what that looks like. Was I? Nope, I think I need to bring back that other foot. No worries. That's why it's a mask. You can definitely bring it back. There. See, now that starts to look a little bit more blue. It probably makes her foot seem bigger than it actually is, but that's okay. Alright, so let me go ahead and see if I can find her leg again. Bring that other foot back in. Pretty good guess. And, you know, I might, if I was really going to fine tune this, I might make one, I might do two layers of the same leg, like to really fine tune it. But you just want it to seem believable. So actually, I can actually hit hide a lot of that because there would be. Let's see if I can do there for a second. Oops. Brush a little bit smaller. So, um, in case you don't know, um, to change your brush size, you can use the bracket keys. So, oops. And then I am going to zoom out a little bit. Huh. Oh, looks like. Looks like I have a little dot there. Oh, my brush is right there. There we go. All right. So this is looking pretty good. Um, take When you guys do this, take your time. I'm actually, if you notice, um, I don't want to bring in the red chair. But one thing... So once you kind of get the masking done the way that you like it, um, some things that you might have to do, and this all just depends on your subject and what you're trying to do, um, is, so one thing, it might be um, reposition, oh, so once I also reposition it, so you guys kind of saw that, um, is I might need to use a free, so I'm to step 23, you might need to use a free transform skew or puppet warp to kind of, you know, mimic the way that they're sitting. So I can do Command-T, um, on my subject layer, and if I hold down the command key, which is your blank, it brings up that warp, and you can kind of warp things into perspective a little bit. If, if you know, if you want to, actually, I kind of think that looks really good to make it just feel like it's a little bit more of what it should be. Um, so the blank for that is command. Um, how to create a contact shadow? So that's so this one everyone will probably have to do, but if we look closely. There should be like a little bit of a contact shadow under her tushy, maybe her foot, her hand a little bit. So I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to make sure this layer is in between my subject and my background layer. I'm going to call this contact shadow. So your blank is shadow. Let me go ahead and just give you the blanks before I forget. So shadow. Um, I'm going to select the brush tool with black or dark gray. I want to paint underneath the subject and to match the direction of the lighting. So I want to make sure it kind of mimics the direction that's happening. Um, I'll be using Filter Blur, Gaussian Blur is the filter that I will be using for this. And then the last blank in this is I will be eventually changing the, multiple, the layer to Multiply. And really you can kind of play around with different blending modes, the layer blending mode. Um, and then, so yeah, so let me go ahead and grab the black paintbrush, um, a paintbrush, and I'm just going to kind of zoom in a little bit and paint a little bit under here. Just kind of mimic that a little bit under her hand. 
And don't worry if you're like, oh no, it, it looks doesn't look right. Don't worry about that part yet. A little bit by your feet. Um, if it goes too far, you can always erase it, but this is where the blur is going to come handy. So I'm going to go ahead and um, go down to Blur, Gaussian Blur, and I can use this blur to really make the shadow match more of what's going on in the scene, right? So you can really make it blur out the way you want to. Um, that looks... And don't worry about the darkness. We're about to fix that too. So it looks a little bit more like the other shadows that's happening. Come over here and change my bending mode to multiply. I can also try any blending mode that you think it makes it feel... Um, multiply and darken, like those will darken it. And then all you have to do is come over and now I can just lower my layer opacity to um, till it matches the shadows. So um, not too bad. So I think that looks a lot more believable. And if you went too far on any of this, you can just select the eraser tool and clean up some of this. So like maybe it's a little too big on the hand. So I'm just going to bring this down just a little bit. And again, I would probably, mm, I'm gonna move my hardness down because then I'm just brushing the edges a little bit. So maybe make it look a little bit darker, yeah. So. Okay, all right, so um, if you need a sharper shadow, if you want to, sh if your lighting has like more of a sh sharper shadow, then you probably would want to use um, the steps that we did for Puppet Warp, or Shadow Puppet, I mean, um, and creating a shadow that way. So that would be in class assignment five notes. Um, you can also, if needed, uh, if you need to make a retouching layer, um, or you need to do some retouching, go ahead, and that's how I'm gonna fix the lake. Like you're like, how am I gonna fix that gap? So I'm gonna create a new layer, call it retouching. And now um, what I can do is now I can use the clone stamp. Um, as long as that's, which is clone stamp or healing brush, and I wanna make sure it samples all layers. So your blank is all layers. And the reason why you wanna do that is you wanna make sure that, I mean, I could make a composite layer, but that just seems like making my file bigger than it needs to be. And now I'm going to zoom in here. And now what I can do is with the clone stamp, make this much smaller, I can, you know, sample her pant leg and fill in so it would kind of, in theory, just continue. And this might be also where you would also, you could play around with, um, there we go. And now I'm kind of filling in that gap where she didn't quite match up. And it looks seamless. It like, you know, this is like bizarre as it is. All right, um, there are some other, if you want to get rid of some other dots. So if I turn on my just some dust, I'll try to clean up her toys as much as possible. But you might have some other dust you want to get up, get cleaned up or anything else. You can go through and clean that up. Um, her doll's hair has gotten curry easy. Got a little hair across her face. A little too much. So you can go through and do as much retouching as you want. Um, and you might not need to. You might not need to do any retouching. Then you don't have to. But that's just an added thing. Um, if your image is too sharp, so because of the way it was photographed and I'm zooming in, you can tell that these don't quite match up 100%. So what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to make sure to select my subject layer. <coughs> I don't think I have to worry about the pant because that looks blurry enough. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to go up to filter. I'm going to go to blur. I'm going to go to Gaussian blur. And obviously that's way too much, but if I bring it down to here, you can kind of, there's a couple ways. Um, you could do a Gaussian blur just to blur it out. And actually, I don't think I want to do that. I think that's too strong. Um, but that's one thing you can do. You can adjust the radius. Um, you can also add adjustment layers. Um, if I wanted to warm up Abby a little bit more, this is the, the, the joys of working with a smart object is I can double click on that and just adjust the white balance a little bit and warm her up to make her match a little bit more. Um, 
But one thing I do recommend doing is creating a noise layer and that will really make this all tie together. So I'm going to go ahead and create a composite layer at the very top, Command Option Shift E to create a composite layer. Um, I'm also going to call this Noise and Sharpen. So I'm going to do both on the same layer. So just to remind you guys, um, Command Option Shift E creates a composite layer. Like I don't want to merge all my layers. I want to see your work. So if you merge all your layers and then sharpen it, you will not get a very good grade. So I'm going to go up to Filter, Add, Noise. I want to check monochromatic and now, whoops, I want to do that. I skipped a step. I'm going to go to filter, convert for smart filters first. Do, 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 do. Okay, now I'm going to go to noise, add noise. Check that it's monochromatic because that will give you more black and white. And this is too much. I'm going to bring that about. Mm, see what that looks like. I really like it around this seven. C4, right there. And go ahead and hit OK. And that also helps it make it seem like it's all the same pictures, like you're adding digital noise back in. Um, and then I'm also, your last step will be to add some sharpening. So if you like to use high pass, you'll have to duplicate your um, this layer. So I'm actually just going to do um, smart sharpen um, because you have to change the layer opacity. And uh, that looks pretty good. So I'm just going to keep it at that. The um, At any point, you can save this file, but I'm going to show you guys a little hint. Um, if you st stop working on this, save it, close everything out, and then come back to it, don't go back into Photo Lightroom and open it from Lightroom to Photoshop. You'll lose all your layers. So I'm going to do a file save as. Um, what I like to do is whenever I'm creating a TIFF file, inside my 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 files for um, so like here are all my raw files I'll create an edit folder and then I'll save it inside there the file will save back into Lightroom but this way I just when I I would then instead of going back into Lightroom to open this just open it straight into Photoshop um, I can't stress that part enough because you'll be very disappointed and I'll be disappointed if you turn in a file with with no layers because that you'll get a zero because I can't can't grade. I can't grade all the steps on your editing. All right, so your last step will be doing an image size. I'm going to change it so that your width is 12 inches or your longest edge, and then 150 ppi. Um, and that's really just for the fact that I do not need a very large file to grade. Um, and this um, will help make sure that you're not turning in one gig files. You might have to, oh, so your blank on that is 150 for a dpi. Um, you might have to, when you do that, make sure that um, you might have to go in and adjust your sharpness um, if it looks a little too strong. It's a nice thing about smart filters. I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lower this a little bit. Let's try right there. Um, is that we can do that. Um, so now I can go to File, Save As, and this is the file that you would do your last name, first initial, the course number, and then final project. And if you want to call this, I think, LP for little people, you can. Um, but you can see, like, these are one gig files, and by saving this, by just lowering the resolution, it's not, it's going to be less than one gig. Um, and it just won't take long to upload and all that stuff. So, um, while you'll upload this file, you're not going to put it straight into Moodle because it will still be too big of a file size. So if I go back into, um, back into here so this file is 300 megabytes um, so it's still too big for us to upload into Moodle we're going to upload it into Drive 1 that's where you guys are going to put your final project files um, and where Drive 1 will be is you will log into your student portal and there's a video on this as well but you'll go into your student portal you'll click on Office 365 and then in Office 365, we have, if you scroll down to the left, there should be a group. You'll just go to Digital Apps and then um, click on this to add a document, and you can just click on this to upload your files. So th just to remind you, you're going to be turning in for your final project will be your double exposure, contact sheets, and then this little people, big person picture. So 
obviously, if you guys have any questions, you can let me know. Um, and good luck, and I look forward to seeing your final projects, which will be due next week.